Hey everyone, this is Casey with C. Reeves Makes. In today's project, I'm going to walk you through my build of the mobile router station. I had initially intended on building a router table from this old sink base and tabletop, but it was in pretty rough shape and needed a lot of work. I also wanted to incorporate some other features into the project, like adding my Foreman pocket hole machine at the same height as the router table, and also incorporating full dust collection. The sponsor of today's video is Craig Tools. Together we came up with a plan to build a fully functional router table with dust collection and storage. I used the precision router table top coupled with the precision router fence and Craig's new router lift. The first thing I did was unbox and assemble all of the router table components. All of the components went together really well and the instructions were very clear on process and assembly steps. I did this first so that I could work on some layouts to determine the overall heights and sizes of the cabinet. Once everything was assembled, it was off to the store to grab some 3 quarter and half inch pure bond hardwood plywood. After getting it back to the shop, it was time to break down the materials. I have the capacity to rip and cross cut full sheets on my table saw, but sometimes my shop isn't set up in the way that best fits that need, so I use my circular saw to do some of the basic sheet good work. This makes the large pieces more manageable when taking them to the table saw. After the basic cabinet pieces were cut, it was on to pocket holes. I recently got the Craig Foreman pocket hole machine, and this thing is a huge time saver if you have projects that require more than a handful of pocket holes. After all the pocket holes were drilled, I moved to cutting the notch in the back panel of the cabinet. This allows the Foreman to be seven and a half inches lower than the top of the router table. I used the jigsaw to complete the square corner cut. Because of how I positioned the foreman next to the router top, I had to build out the front and the rear of the cabinet to allow for a larger mounting surface. I decided to cut angles into this area to blend it. You will see this as the assembly starts. Again, I used the table saw to cut the majority of the straight cuts and then used the jigsaw to cut the sharp corners. There is an interior support plate that has to match the outer side panel and I use the taper sled to cut that angle. You can also use a jigsaw or circular saw to make this cut. And then it was on to the assembly. This is the basic glue and screw method for the main carcass. I used the weight of the panels and the flatness of my bench to keep the joints flush. I also glued this cabinet together and I know that some people prefer not to use glue in general construction, but I wanted this cabinet to remain robust as I moved it around my shop and over bumps and cords on the floor. The interior support plate was just mounted by pre-drilling holes and using one and a quarter inch screws. I clamped it so that it was flush with the surface mounting height of the outside panel and the back wall and then screwed it into place. This provides three edges of contact that can mount to the top panel. Once the interior plate was mounted, I added glue and then set the top panel in place and added weight to let the glue set for a few minutes. Then from underneath, I screwed the top panel down using the pre-drilled pocket holes and screws.
On the back side of the cabinet, I added a small gusset brace with CA glue and a single pocket screw. These will allow for the top panel corners to stay put over time. And next it was the interior of the cabinet and adding drawer slides. The more that I use these drawer slide jigs, the better I get with them. They make short work of slide installs. Simply mark your slide locations, clamp your jigs, and mount your slides. For the drawers, I used half inch Pure Bond maple plywood. I ripped the panel widths at the table saw and then clamped those to the table and cross cut them with my AccuCut guide and the circular saw. After that, it was over to the miter saw for all the drawer panels. For assembly, I used a basic glue and brad nail approach and then I will add screws to the front panels for strength. I've never had an issue with the drawers separating and I do not plan on adding a ton of weight to these. If over time the drawers show any stress or separation, I will just add more screws. I used two pieces of scrap material to space the drawer off the bottom of the cabinet and then mounted it to the slides. I repeated the process for the upper drawers as well by adding larger spacers to the top of the bottom drawer and pulling the slides out and mounting them. With the drawers mounted, it was onto the drawer fronts. I wanted all of the fronts to have matching continuous grain, so I saved one large offcut for this while planning the cut list. I cut that panel to size and then marked the center of where the middle cabinet divider fell on the panel. And then over at the table saw, I ripped the upper fronts from the lower fronts and made sure that they were the same height. And then, using my crosscut sled, I bisected that line that I marked earlier. I marked the center point of each drawer front and used my cabinet hardware jig to mark and drill the locations for my handles. I also decided that I wanted to ease the edges of the drawer fronts, so I used an eighth inch roundover bit in my trim router to do this. Before mounting the drawer fronts, I pre-drilled some random holes into the front of each drawer box. This will come in handy later when I secure the fronts to the boxes. Using an old ruler and some heavy duty washers that are 8 inch thick, I laid out the drawer fronts symmetrically on all the boxes, keeping track of the grain pattern. And then using the drawer hardware holes that I drilled with the jig earlier, I secured the drawer fronts to the boxes from the outside. After those were mounted, I opened the drawers and secured the fronts from the inside using the random holes that I had drilled. For the bit storage cubbies, I was not sure how to approach the build, so I made some flat bottoms from some leftover scraps and used some fronts that matched to make the face plates. I plan to make some nice bit storage here, but I'm still thinking about the direction I want to go with it. So for now, these are just going to be sliding trays. For the router cabinet door, I cut down the panel to size and then marked out the locations for the hinges. Using the concealed hinge jig, I drilled the holes for each hinge. This is by far my favorite Craig jig to use, so easy to set up and go. And after making a mess with the jig, I mounted the hinges and then put the door under the cabinet, using the same spacers that I used for the drawer fronts. Once everything was lined up nicely, I secured the hinges to the cabinet from the inside.
Next was the electrical panel. I planned for this area to be where all the cords and connections would be hidden. I cut the panel to size and then secured it with screws on one side of the cabinet. I was struggling with where I was going to mount the on-off switch for the router, but I had an idea after seeing the space that I had to work with. I plan to use the Craig multi-purpose on-off switch, and this switch also allows for a shop vac to be plugged in so that when the switch is activated, both the vac and the router turn on at the same time. However, with my panel being concealed, I opted not to plug my vac into the switch. I marked the location of the switch on the panel and then drilled out the four corners with a drill bit. And then using my jigsaw, I cut out the opening and pressed the switch into place. The switch has tabs on the side for mounting, but they would not allow it to sit flat on the panel. So I used my Dremel and a cutoff disc to remove the tabs and make the switch mount flush to the face of the panel. And now it's time for the casters, as this thing is getting pretty heavy and awkward to move around. The casters that I use have slots for the mounting, so I used large fender washers and a mix of short construction screws and pocket hole screws to secure them. Be sure to pre-drill all the holes for the casters prior to installing them. I will have links in the description of this video for all the parts and products that I used. And by purchasing through those links, you are supporting my channel and giving me the means to keep creating more projects and videos to share with you in the community. Thank you. After making this cabinet more manageable, it was time to install the drawer hardware. Using a small Forstner bit, I carefully countersinked the hardware holes from inside the drawer boxes to allow the screws to reach the handles as the hardware they provide is never long enough. I then installed all the handles and put the drawers back into the cabinet. Be sure to open and close the drawers a few times to work the slides in as sometimes they are a bit tight. It's finally time to set the Craig Foreman and the router tabletop onto the cabinet. I was happy to see the heights matched and everything lined up exactly where I wanted it to. Then I started routing the power cords through the cabinet. The router cord goes into the cavity where the electrical panel is and plugs into the on-off switch. The on-off cord goes out the back of the cabinet and plugs into the main wall outlet. and then I reattached the electrical panel and added screws for the on-off switch. After making sure everything was secure and routed properly, I dropped the router plate into the top of the table and secured it. I checked to make sure the tabletop was square and flat to the cabinet and secured it with pocket screws from underneath. There is great access to the router inside the cabinet. And now it's time for the dust collection. With the dust collection, I knew that I wanted it to be affordable and easy to assemble. There are so many different sized fittings and hoses out there that I chose simple white Schedule 40 PVC piping for mine. I also knew that I wanted blast gates to close off the tool that I wasn't using. I needed two blast gates to run the system the way I wanted it to. After a bunch of mock-up and guesswork, the dust collection came together and was ready for final install. I had to make a mounting block to mount the blast gates to, to get them off the back of the cabinet. This allowed everything to be nice and in line and parallel. I used two scrap pieces of plywood screwed together as the buffer to get the blast gates out the back. I also knew that I needed a bracket for the side pipe where I would be mounting the hose to the dust collection. This again was a piece of scrap that I just bored a hole into and then used my oscillating spindle sander to match fit the size of the pipe that I was putting through it. 
I use two pocket holes to secure it to the side of the panel. After all the fits proved accurate, I used plumber cement and epoxy to secure all the joints. And in the last minute, I decided to paint all the piping black so that it looked better. What do you think? Would you have painted it? After that, all that was left was secure the hose with hose clamps. Overall, I have to say that I'm really happy with how this router table combo turned out. It has everything that I need for pocket holes and routing in one spot. I know those two don't necessarily go together, but with a small mobile shop like mine, I need to maximize the floor space for every tool that I have. There is enough storage for what I need and enough versatility to take it outside on a nice day. I'm really happy with how the dust collection turned out and the versatility of the hose and being able to move the fence back out of the way. In doing tests with the dust collection and the router, I was also impressed that there was very little dust left over on the tabletop after finishing routing. For a full set of plans on this build, head over and check out buildsomething.com. I would like to thank Craig Tools and Purebond Plywood for sponsoring today's video. Without them, this project wouldn't be what it is today. If you liked this video, please be sure to check out my channel. If you like what you find there, please subscribe and tell a friend. This is Casey with C Reeves Makes and thanks for watching.